Okay, before we start, I'd like to mention that I made a new class for our girl number one. I called her Aina. There she is. <clears throat> and um, I also forgot to mention where I actually got these sprites. I just typed in visual novel, I just searched visual novel assets uh, on itch.io and these came up. They're made by Momoka and she says that crediting her in her game is not a requirement, but it would make her happy, so yeah, let's do that. I believe the license that it's under actually does require you to cre uh, give credit, but I'm not too sure about that. So, <clears throat> okay, so back to the video. Um, I made Aina. I also made sure to override the get participant name and get the participant display name. Uh, and just made sure they say Aina. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and our event graph wasn't running, so I just, you know, dragged off these and said print string and then got rid of the print string to make sure that they're not grayed out because for some reason, sometimes when it's grayed out, it doesn't actually even run. Uh, the reason we didn't have to override the uh, on dialog event for Aina is because, well, our, when we created Aina, Aina uh, our participant class already knew that it was a dialog callback. So these functions are automatically set to do the parent function. Unlike with Yuri, who we set the dialogue callback, or who we made a dialogue participant before we did it for our participant. Okay. Also modified our script a little bit. It's just Yuri says, hello, I'm Yuri. And Yuri says, I'm going to go away now, bye. And Aina says, wait, I didn't even get to introduce myself yet. So if we hit play right now. Oh, also in my uh, dialogue, I added Aina to our canvas panel and in the graph I made sure to include her in the get participants. There's the switch on name for Aina right there. Okay so if we hit play right now hit start and there they are. Hello I'm Yuri. Here's the thing though I want them to move to I want them to start in certain places so let's take care of that first. In our test dialog what we could do is you know we could set the Enter, or sorry, not enter conditions, enter events. We could set uh, Yuri's uh, class float for the target X to be, say, 700 or whatever. <clears throat> but the problem with doing it this way is that if we want to change what it means to be at the right position or the left position or whatever, like after we've already written our script and gave everybody their positions, we could have to go through every single one of them. We would have to go through every single one of these nodes and say, hey, it's not 700, it's say 750 or whatever. And that would be kind of a pain, so let's just make a function for that in our participant instead. So, in our participant, on, let's do modify name value. We're going to switch on the value name, we're going to say switch on name. And we're going to ask this if that name is up here. Or, sorry. Um, position X. Let's just call it that. By default, we will simply return, but if it is position X, we will switch on the name value that we're modifying. Switch on name here. And by default, again, we will return. Otherwise, we will do something for five cases. They're going to be the off left, left, center, right, and off right. Oh, apparently we can just check this has default pin and get rid of it. That's handy. Let's just get rid of those default pins because I don't really care about uh, what happens on default. So on offlet we will simply set uh, target x to be negative 1500 and let's just copy this and paste it a couple times. For 0 it will be 0 
positive, I mean for off right it will be positive negative 500 or 1500 and positive 700 for right and negative 700 for left and we might as well connect these all to the return node Like so, okay. So compile, save this. So in our dialog, instead of modifying a class or a class float variable, we can just say modify name. The name is target x and value for Yuri is gonna be at the right. Also want one for uh Aina. I want her to modify name. Name is position x or Sorry, was it position x or target x? Position x, sorry. Uh, so over here it's position x. And she's going to appear at the left. Uh, save this. And hit play. Hit play. And Yuri, or Aina moves over to the left, which is actually not what we want. We want her to automatically appear there. And y Yuri doesn't move at all. Actually, she is moving. It's just that her move speed is super slow. Um, I did that on purpose to demonstrate a problem, but you know, for now, let's fix. Uh, let's turn it back to five thousand. That was done in the last take, by the way. Uh, okay, so back in our test dialog, let's also add a enter event on this first one that just says to make them appear. So. Anna event is modify or sorry modify name or sorry event it's just an event my bad and that event is just up here and same for come on drop down same for Yuri just tell her to appear save and play now and they appear at the right places. Okay, I'm actually going to make them opposite. Uh, I want them to face each other. So Yuri will go on the left and Aina will go on the right. And if we wanted to modify what left and right means now, we can just go back to our participant and modify it here. Uh, instead, let's say negative 300 and positive 300 just to make it really obvious that it's working. Start, and now they're super close together. Okay, I'm gonna actually undo that though because that's way too close. Okay, so that fixes, uh, well, it doesn't, it's not a problem, but it's a convenient thing we just took care of now. So back in our dialog, what we want now is for Yuri to go away. I'm going to go away now. Bye. So into our enter events, let's say tell Yuri to modify a class float variable, which is target x. Actually, we can say um, modify name, position x, and she's going to go off right. I think she's at the right right now. Save. What is it? Yuri's position is left, sorry, off left. Save. So if we hit play and start, I'm Yuri, she goes away, I'm gonna go away now, bye. Um, but if we slow her down a lot, back to our move speed, I'm gonna set it back to one. Compile and save, start. I'm going to go away now. She's moving away, but really slowly. And if we go to the next line, Aina says, wait, I didn't even get to introduce myself yet, but she's still there, which is a problem. So we want to make it so that when we go to the next line of dialogue, we tell everyone to just move to wherever they're supposed to go. Like, just jump there, because, well, we want to go to the next line. We want to do whatever they want to do at the next line now. Uh, to do this, we can go to our dialogue, and basically, in our event graph here, Oh, also, I forgot to mention, in Yuri, we have to, on modify name value, um, make sure you right-click and add a call to parent function, 
and connect these up properly. Otherwise, she won't do anything when you do the uh, set position right and left because of the way we messed up making Yuri, but pr hopefully your own characters won't be this messed up. Uh, and no, I don't mean messed up as in, in Doki Doki Literature Club, I mean the way we set it up. Hopefully you set your characters up after making sure your participant is a dialogue. Participant, okay. So back in our dialogue, Basically, every time we would, ch uh, before we say choose child, here it is, before we choose a child in our dialogue context, we want to tell all of our characters to finish doing whatever it is they're doing so that we can move on to the next line. So over here in the choose option, we can get our Aina and get our Yuri and tell them to do stuff. Uh, Set, we could get the translation. Sorry, set translation. And, you know, split this and send in their X and stuff like that. Problem is, we would have to do this for every single character, and it would be kind of a pain to do it like that. So instead, what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is in our participant, I'm just going to make a new function in our event graph, or actually it doesn't matter where we make this function, but let's just make a new function in our event graph. I'm going to add an event, custom event, we'll just call this up here, and this is just going to be to tell our character image set translation split this, and we'll tell it to move to our target x. Compile and save, and go back to our dialog. And the advantage of doing it this way is that we can just say appear, and we can tell multiple characters to appear at once using just one node. So it doesn't matter how many uh, characters we have, we can just plug them all into this one appear over here. Like that, sure. And we also have to make sure we do this copy. Um, over here in the click to continue when we choose the child or before we choose the child like so hit play start I'm Yuri I'm gonna go away now she's moving away we click and she's gone so we can start doing the next stuff or whatever else she wanted to do um, actually, I'm going to change this uh, name of the function to say uh, finish animating. Animate. Yeah, animating. Because we also wanted to tell it, hey, if you're in the middle of doing some animations, you know, tell it to finish those animations. So in this function, we would also tell, we would also get our animations. For every animation, we would say is animation plane branch over here and if it is playing tell it to finish or uh, I'm not sure what the actual thing is get start time Animation. User interface animation. Get current animation time is playing. Is playing forward play. Play animation 2. Set playback speed. Stop animation. I suppose we can just say stop animation. And, um,. Tell it to play animation to zero. End time at zero. Um, because we're assuming that the beginning of our animation is just what our default state is for our character. For example, in our jump, uh, in our jump, in a timeline, you'll notice that the start of it is just at zero because we're assuming that whenever we play our animation it's at whatever default state it's at. 
Yeah, that should work. Anyways, we would do this for every animation. Um, just to make sure we do this. Just make sure we also do this when we uh, tell it to finish animating. Um, is there anything else I wanted to cover in this video? Well, first off, I should set Yuri's animation or move speed back to 5,000. And I can't think of anything. How long has this video been? 15 minutes, sure. That seems like a great time to stop considering how long the last video was. So I'll see you in the next video when we're probably going to save our options then.